Today, I'm really excited to have not only somebody I know professionally, but as a friend, we've gotten to know each other over the last, I would say, three to four years. We met several years ago at a family office event, and I was really intrigued by the work that she has done. Uh, she's an MD, but she also has created a company called Money With Mission. And I'm really excited to share her work and the things that she does with her company, Money With Mission. My guest, Felicia Fro, she represents an investment-focused firm that empowers professional women to build wealth and achieve financial freedom through social impact investing. Welcome to the show. Hey Rose, how are you? I can't believe I don't I don't even remember how long ago it was that we met. It was like five years ago, six years ago. Oh, was it that long? Yeah, I, I, I think it was because so much time we, there was. You know, we met and then we never talked and then we connected again. It was so interesting. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And then uh, you sent me a copy of your book. Do you remember that? Mm, kind of. I don't know which one. Which one? Do you remember? It was a real estate book, I believe. Was that the wealth with wealth for women? Probably. Yeah, I believe yeah. that was. I believe that was. Okay. So I want to dive into first of all, let's let's talk to our audience a little bit about your background because it's kind of fascinating to me. I mean, you're a doctor by day, and you know projects by night. You know, so let's talk to our audience a little bit about your background. So I lost you for a second. You said I'm a doctor by day and then you cut out for a minute, but that's okay. Cause I think I know where you were going with that question. <laughs> um, I'm a doctor part-time by day. I'm a urologist. I went to school to do that. I've been doing that since, well, I'm going to say for over 20 years, it's probably closer to 30 years, believe it or not. But sometime in there, probably within the first five years, I realized that this wasn't going to be, that medicine wasn't the last thing I was ever going to do. And I don't, I had no idea what that was going to be. It was kind of a scary thing, having just spent all the time and money to go through medical school. I was just in my first practice. So this voice came and said, hey, there's more, to, there's more. And I'm just like, okay, I don't know what that means. And it took probably 18 years for me to figure out that I had something to do with working with women and real estate investing. And there's that whole story is a pretty um, windy, twisty, but we started, our family started with single family investing, single family housing investing, and then um, worked up to investing in um, apartments and resorts out of the country. And um, ultimately I realized I, wanted to really, really work with women and understand, have, have women understand that it's important to have multiple streams of income or if nothing else, money that you can use that you don't have to go to your job to do because lots of things come up in life. We always think about um, going to work and working to retire so you can enjoy retirement, but so many things come up in our lives between starting work and retiring that you need money for and time, which is what mm -hmm. money really gives you is time um, to do. So that's where I start came with money with mission. And it was initially a real estate syndication company only, but that still wasn't feeding my soul just to, to buy properties and, you know, rent them out and sell them, da, 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 all that just wasn't feeding me. So having a positive social impact really, really got me going. So doing things like residential assisted living and grocery stores and food deserts and that kind of stuff are the kinds of things that we invest in at Money With Mission. I love that. I love that. Now, let's talk a little bit about, you know, why this is so important for you, you know, as a woman, you know, we talked a little bit about, you know, when you first became, you know, a doctor, you were one of the only women doing the kinds of work that you were, you know, doing, correct? Yep. yep. One of the first 100 female urologists in the country. That's amazing. That's, I mean, you are definitely a trendsetter. So now what, I mean, going into money with mission and, and having it focused around not only women, which obviously the two of us really want to support. 
So sorry about that, but out here. Yeah. So the thing is, is that let's talk a little bit about this impact of what, you know, what are you seeing, you know, based on, you know, the things that the, the kinds of work that you're doing currently. So one of my most favorite projects and what I'm working the most on is having people have nutritious food. As a physician, we know that eating well, we know that a lot of chronic disease comes from poor habits. And one of the poor habits we have in this country is that we don't eat well. Um, it's easier to stop at McDonald's or one of the fast food chains and get food because we're tired, we're running around like crazy, we're doing so many different things. And what I found is that there are even places where people may want to eat better, but don't even have a full service grocery store where that is available to them. So I recently moved to Tulsa, Oklahoma, working on a, working with a project that we had here, and that's getting a grocery store in North Tulsa, where they hadn't had a full service grocery store in over 10 years. And they had done a resilience paper for the city and found that the people of North Tulsa lived 11 years less than the people in the rest of Tulsa. Now, while there's a lot of reasons for that, one of them had to be in our minds that there was no full service grocery store, no place to get real fresh produce, which is, of course, one of the big things in our in our diets that we should have is fresh produce. Um, so that's why I moved here. We got that going. And we just, it's open now for a couple of years. So we'll see what that does overall to the impact of North Tulsa. But there's so many places in our country that have, that food deserts. The other thing about food is in the Midwest, where we have really short, we have relatively short growing seasons, Midwest, North, and all of our produce is coming from places like California, Arizona, Texas, Florida, and those that food is picked really early. And as soon as a uh, produce is picked, a tomato is picked, an apple is picked, an orange is picked, as soon as it's picked, it starts losing nutritional value. Now it's gotta be shipped across the country to the middle of the country or to north, wherever, to be eaten. And we're getting food that has less nutritional density. So one of the other things I'm working on is getting actual indoor controlled farms in the Midwest or even one big one that can supply a, a lot of area so that we can have more nutritionally dense food. Um, so working with some folks, Rose knows one of the people that I'm working with trying to get working to get that here in, well, I want it to be in Tulsa, Oklahoma, but I'll put it anywhere in the Midwest. 250 miles means local. And when it comes to produce um, in our country, believe it or not. Yeah, well, that's amazing. Uh, you know, like you said, you know, we obviously know somebody that, you know, we both are supporting and she's actually building the uh, one of the vertical farms in Detroit and Chicago. So I'm not sure how far that is from you, but I, I absolutely agree. I think that, you know, the Midwest and, you know, in places where, you know, food is not locally grown because of the weather. Um, I think this uh, creates a massive opportunity. Um, and then that's what I'm also really passionate about. And so, you know, talk to me a little bit about, you know, why this is so important for you. I mean, what, why have you made this your mission, you know, uh, especially around food? Well, again, as a physician, I realize, and we as physicians realize that how you eat impacts your health. And I'm about health. I'm about people being as much as they can be. And with a healthy body, you can get there. Um, the other thing is, is for me is women. And then I start thinking about how many women are single and have children and how much of their mind space has to be taken up with getting their children something healthy to eat. And if that is easy, if that's taken off the plate of something you have to worry about, uh, pun intended, taking off the plate of something you have to worry about, what else can you now fill your mind with? What creative things can you think about? What else can you be and do for your children if you don't have to think about where they're going to get their next good meal from and make sure your children are healthy? So mm -hmm. that's why it's important to me. It's about making sure that the end consumer, whether it's a man, a woman, a kid, has a nutritionally dense meal, which will keep you from eating as much junk, it'll decrease our um, obesity, it'll decrease diabetes, decrease high blood pressure, decrease all of those things 
so that we have a healthier population, which then makes the population more able to do other things. So that's the, that's the consumer side. For the investor side, for I want women, professional women who are working so hard and the only income they have is from that job. So that yeah. when they, if they have a, something come up, one of their kids, their parents, they need time off because they need to take care of them. Now, if, they're, if they've invested in something, they have a stream of income coming from that thing. And I'm not talking about a stock market where you where you have to wait for that thing to be sold, actually. I'm talking about passive income. You've invested in something that's throwing off cash for you so that you can now have this time freed up to do mm -hmm. the things that you need to or want to do. So that's that's the passion for me. That's why it's important to me. I have two kids. I raised them. It was it was hard. Well, I, yes, I was married, but it was it's hard when you're thinking about, I want to be able to take my kids to school. I want to be able to be home when they're sick. My mom was sick. I need to be able to be there to help her. All those things can, when you have to be at your job to make the money to ha have life happen, it right. makes it impossible to do those things that are also very, very important to us. Yeah, I agree. And I think that COVID was a great example, right? Where I think I was reading some statistics where, you know, women, you know, it affected women like 76%, you know, of their income because of, you know, the women having to stay home with the the child or whatever the case may may be and i think that that should incentivize women in terms of really going out there and creating some sort of passive you know income but you know when people think of passive income you know i think that there's some standard things that come to mind whether it be real estate or whether it be the stock market or mutual funds um things of more of the public markets but the women don't really necessarily think of the private markets. So I want to talk a little bit about what you see from your space in terms of, you know, what are what are some of the investments that you see are available for women to participate in these private sectors? So everything's available, just so you know, all, all things are available. Anything can be called, can be syndicated. And to syndicate something basically means a bunch of people put their money together to make a thing happen. So that's a syndication and they all have a, a, um, a role and their role, your role may strictly be funding and somebody's running the project or running the deal. So if you want to um, be a part of a um, low income housing development, so you and you, but you don't have time, you go to your job, you like your job, you like being a lawyer, you like being a doctor, you love that stuff. Go do that let your money go work for you. Let your money go help folks who live in, who can't find housing. So whether you're in California with the homeless population, whether you're in Oklahoma, there's a homeless population. There's, it seems to be a bigger and bigger problem. Finding housing for people is a big deal. So now mm -hmm. you've invested in that, you're getting cash because of the way the deal is run. And it's very important that you understand how you're gonna get your money. You get, you're going to, and who's running the deal. So you want to know who you're giving your money to, to me all the time. And one of the big things I see is that people get worried about giving their money to a person, like giving their money to me to, to manage for them in a project. But don't think about the fact that every paycheck, some money is given to somebody. Basically, if you think about it, you put your money in a suitcase or an envelope and hand it to a, a, a hand that's coming around the corner for them to manage it for you and your 401k. You don't know that person. You don't, right. we don't think about that at all. So in private placements and in private investments, you should know who you're giving your money to. You should trust them. You should like them. It's like getting married to them to some degree because you're gonna be in that deal with them for quite some time. And if things aren't going well, you wanna be able to call them up and ask them what the heck's going on. So right. those are, those are some of the big important things to me about private placements, but private placements can be housing. It can be grocery stores. It can be indoor controlled farms. It can be outdoor controlled farms. It can be land. It can be um, movies. It can be Broadway shows. It can be so many things that if it's important to you and like people think, how's art social impact? That's way, that's so much impact. Art 
as far as the um, Broadway shows and books, those have impact. So whatever right. is important to you, if you want to invest in it, it is there for you to invest in and you just need somebody to help you find it. That's all yeah, I, I agree with that. And, you know, that reminds me of uh, a family that I, I know that invested into that. Um, um, it was a, um, a documentary called Game Changer. I don't know if you remember that, you know, that came out several years ago and it talked about uh, plant-based diets. Okay. And so they were really passionate about this family in particular was uh, funded the uh, Impossible Burger. And so they were really passionate about uh, plant-based diets. And so they actually donated the, I think it was about $3 million to, to an organization to, to kind of get that off the ground. And it was a really impactful film. Now you used uh, a word, you used a word there called, you used a word donate because donate is different than invest. Right. Me, donating doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get a return. So I'm always wanting people to use the word invest, no matter what it is. If you're going to get a financial return or an impact return, you're expecting a return. When you put your money out there, you expect some kind of return. That's true. That's wonderful. true. I like, I like how you put that. And that is absolutely true. I think that they, you know, wanted, you know, the impact of, of what, you know, plant-based diets can do. And, you know, it was kind of showcasing how um, athletes use it and perform better when they switch to a plant-based diet. Although, you know, I'm not there yet, you know, in terms of plant -based. I'm not there either. I'm not either, but I'm more <laughs> plant-based than I was. I'm not 100% plant-based. I don't know that I have to be, or you have to be. It's what makes you feel best. But we yeah. do know science shows, it's not even just that show, science shows that higher plant-based diet is better for us. We do better, have less inflammation, have a lot of less, a lot of less, a lot less issues than <laughs> we have a full meat diet and don't eat enough vegetables and fiber and that kind of stuff. And that's where that stuff, fiber comes from vegetables. Most of our vitamins come from vegetables. So you got to have them. Just start ramping it up. I'm not saying don't eat meat because I, my steak is good. I'm just gonna tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I agree with that one. Touche, touche. <laughs> That's too funny. Um, so you know, I, I I appreciate you talking about some of these. I, I think important issues. Whether you know you're a, a full time investor or a part time investor. Um, you know, getting involved in especially something that you're passionate about, uh, but then you can obviously find a way to make money with that. So I want to kind of do a little bit of a, a more of a dive into something you kind of touched upon early on here in the in the show is, is that you said that, you know, you got behind some of these um, grocery stores. Talk to me a little bit about these uh, grocery stores that you, you know, were a part of. So it's, it's a grocery store at this point. And so at this grocery, we worked with the city. We got a lot of, I'm learning so much about new market tax credits and low income tax credits. All this tax, the government really helps you, helps private sector do some things that I'm learn, still learning so much about and they help by, with tax credits. So we were able to get the grocery store opened here in Tulsa, um, full service grocery store, everything you could want in there. Um, and the plan with that grocery store is to make it our um, flagship store, learn everything we need to learn about running a grocery store from there, and then reproducing that model across the country in different places, starting in Oklahoma, and then just spreading it out, increasing the circumference of where we're putting these grocery stores in the country. I love that. I love that. And so, you know, talk to us also a little bit about some of your initiatives. It's upcoming 2023. We're just on the cusp of it happening. So talk to me in terms of, you know, what are some of your initiatives going into this new year? So the mean, the couple of things that I'm working on for 2023, it is a low income housing, affordable housing project that we're looking at um, taking on here in Tulsa. Um, looking still at getting an indoor controlled farm here in Tulsa. We may not get it this this year, but working on getting it here eventually um, and having some, bringing some really high quality jobs to North Tulsa. Um, that's a big one. I'm talking to a friend of mine, wink, wink, about a medical spa actually in mid-California. Um, 
I know that's not necessarily mission oriented, but we we can, you know, everybody needs something, right? So it, that's true. It's mission oriented in that if a woman or man needs to feel better about themselves and that will help, then that is what that's for. Again, once you get, when your mind gets clear, creativity pours in and we need so much more of that in our country right now, in the world right now, to solve the big problems we got going on. People have, we have to get our heads clear so we can solve some of this big stuff going on. So yeah, I, I agree with that. All those kinds of things that possible the spa, we're looking at a bunch of stuff into 2023. It's a, it's a big year. We got a lot going on. You made me scared. I, now I agree. I thought about it like that, Rose. I was just like, you know, we'll do this, a little bit of that. And I was like, oh my gosh, there's a lot. I got a lot yeah. to do. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, you're obviously, you're still a doctor by day. Uh, that's, that's going less and less, mostly because uh -huh. I'm enjoying these other things so much more. So that's the plan by the end of 2023 is to, I'll still be a doctor. They cannot take my medical school, my medical training away from me, right? They're yeah. not always going to be a doctor, but to practice urology, significantly less or just for free when somebody needs some advice and then they can take that advice to their doctor and go with that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, th this has really been, you know, really fascinating. And I, I appreciate you sharing your journey with, with us and kind of giving an insight uh, into your world and what does that look like and some of the things that you're passionate about because I, I believe that some of the things that you're passionate about I'm as well passionate about and so how can somebody get a hold of you if they're interested in connecting with you and learning more about some of the work that you're doing I'm, I'm going to say before I answer that question I'm going to tell you I just learned today that the word for 2022 is woman and they explained why on that and it's because almost everything every big thing that happened this year is has women associated with it from um, women's rights with the taking down of roe v wade nationally to um women's um britney griner being taken in russia to i can't even remember all the different things the me too movement was that this year i can't even remember but the year the word of this year is woman so, oh, I love that. Thank I you know. for sharing that. I love I fun know. facts like that. And you know what? I believe that that is true. You know what? Like I, I keep saying, you know, women are the new acid class. We are not the new asset class. We're finally the recognized, a recognized asset class. And there you go. There you go. We just need to be recognized and yeah. appreciated and, and just seen. So it's happening. It seems to be slow. And for some women, sometimes we don't even realize what that, it, that it is a thing, but when, mm -hmm. when the word of the year is woman, that's, that's huge to me. I mean, really? This yeah. Word forever. And now that's the word of the year. Very <laughs> interesting to me. So to find me, you go to moneywithmission.com. Um, we got lots of good things going on. If you've not invested and you're just learning how to invest or you're scared to invest, I have play a game called Cashflow 101 once a month. So you can find that on the site, register for that game. It's really fun, women only. So if you have no clue, no clue whatsoever about, whatsoever about investing or you're just scared, you learn about financial, financial forms, balance sheets, assets and liabilities, we have a good time. So that's one thing that's really available there. It's free. It's free. It takes an hour and a half of your time. That's what it takes once a month. And you can only, you can come just play once. So that's one thing. So moneywithmission.com. Um, you can go to legacy at moneywithmission.com and get my free ebook. It's not the one I sent you, Rose, but this one's called How to Build Wealth that outlives you. So that ebook is available for anyone who wants to go to legacy at moneywithmission.com. And I'm on LinkedIn as Felicia Fro MD and Facebook kind of sorta, not so much. Um, same Felicia Fro. And that's that's me, you guys. I'm here. I love that. I love that. And uh, like I said, I learned today that uh, woman is uh is it's uh 2022 and as we transition into 2023. Uh, let's see what the, the word will be of 2023. So thank you for sharing that. And thank you for coming on. I, I can't wait to share this with, you know, my audience and, and really hope that, you know, this inspires other women. So thank you. 
Thank you, Rose. You keep doing what you're doing and inspiring. I appreciate it. Cheers. <clears throat>